businessman, Ivan McKean. He's worked in manufacturing for 30 years. He's currently got interest in manufacturing businesses in Scotland, England, and Eastern Europe, and he runs his own manufacturing turnaround and consultancy company. His work's taken him across the globe, including periods working in Scandinavia and Eastern Europe. Ivan is a director of Business for Scotland, and he sees high growth potential for the Scottish economy in many sectors. So please welcome Ivan McKean. Speakers, thanks very much for um, coming out tonight. I'm assuming there's no good football on tonight, that's why uh, everybody's here. Um, I know you've been listening to people talking, and I'd like me to put some pictures up, so hopefully that will uh, break up a wee bit for you. So, in the next 10 minutes, I want to go through a wee bit about why I'm here and a wee bit about um, the reasons why I think the Scottish economy is strong and would survive and uh, thrive under independence. Um, so, first of all, to talk about why I'm here, um, as Amanda said, I'm in manufacturing. The last 10 years, I've been doing business. On my own, um, I've now employed about 500 people across four countries doing business manufacturing in Scotland, England and Eastern Europe. I live for periods in, in a number of countries uh, in Europe and worldwide. Um, when the referendum first came up as a live issue two years ago, um, I decided to have a look at it, not from an emotional point of view, but purely from a business point of view, to understand what it would mean for my business. And the way I went about that was to look at the numbers, ignoring the political spin, because the numbers are important. Look at the numbers and analyse it as if it was a business deal. If Scotland PLC was a company, it was a company that I would want to put my money into, like I did with other companies, or is it something I'd want to steer it well clear of? And what I found surprising, because perhaps like you, over the years, I've been led to believe instinctively that Scotland was too wee, too poor, couldn't afford this subsidised by the rest of the UK, couldn't stand on our own two feet. What I found surprising is I said it was very, very much the opposite. So I'm going to take a few minutes just to run you through some of that stuff, and there'll be plenty of time for uh, questions later. The first thing to note is um, Scotland generates more tax per person than the UK average. Big surprise to me, big surprise to most people that find that out. Here's the data from the last five years. Every one of those last five years, Scotland generated more tax per person than the UK average. Tax includes everything, income tax, corporation tax, national insurance, VAT, road tax, you name it, all added together divided by the population. Government statistics, nobody disputes those numbers. Okay, it's quite the what they dispute is what's going to happen in the future. Nobody argues about where we are today, what's happened in the past. Um, so if you look at the average, the last five years, Scotland's generating £1,200 more per head into the, into, into the government than the UK average. Not, not the last five years is, is typical, that's the data going right back for the last 33 years to when the data set was first started in 1980. The darker line, the higher line, Scotland's tax data per person, the lower line, the lighter line, sorry, is, um, but too fast. Yeah. The lower line, the lighter line is the UK average um, tax data per person. Some years Scotland generating an embarrassing amount more, sometimes just a bit more, but in every one of those years Scots generating more tax per person than the UK average. Oh. Sorry. Slow down, slow down. GDP per person, that's how they measure the wealth of countries. Uh, Scotland's GDP per person, gross domestic, domestic product per person, 11% higher than the UK average last year, 18% higher than the year before. Again, nobody should dispute these numbers. The reason Dan doesn't want to talk about them is because they don't favour his argument. They're all there on the internet, go look for me for yourself. It's kind of clear. Standard & Poor's report February 2014 looking at the Scottish economy and how they would rate as a ratings agency the Scottish economy if we were an independent country. Very clear about the, the directions of the economy, very clear about our GDP per head at $47,000 per person, very clear about the fact that oil isn't the deal and end on 15% of our economy, it's only one of many, many sectors that we benefit from. In actual fact, even without oil, Scotland's economy, GDP per person is the same, the same as the UK average. Oil is very much the bonus on top. The question is, what do we want to do with the second half? The old bonanza, you want to spend it confessing Scotland or allow Westminster to waste it like they wasted the first half of the old bonanza. Moving on, um, GDP per person, if you look at um, small countries, Dan talks about small countries don't work, the data says something very different, and anyone who's lived in small countries abroad knows that that's not the case. Small countries, medium-sized countries, because Scotland's a medium-sized country, 5 million people, are very perfectly viable and do very well. Richest countries in the world, look at the list, mostly, most of small, independent, North and West European countries, similar size to Scotland. 
fact that the, the whole point is what you do with the wealth you've got. Small countries are more effective because they're more democratic, closer to the population, more responsible, more responsive, able to deal with opportunities faster, and able to deal with risks and manage, manage their way out of those. So the data shows small countries do better. Right, okay. Some more data. IFS, we talked about the facts. This is the Institute of Fiscal Studies that the UK government's forever quoting, talking about um, uh, what, what the, the state of the Scottish economy. IFS is very, very clear. Um, Scotland's economy, tax type per person, higher than the UK average. Um, absolutely doubt about that. I do look forward to what they say about, um, what they say about um, Scotland's deficit lower than the UK average. We spend more than the UK, absolutely. Who thinks the rest of the UK is going to allow us to spend more per head than, than, than they do down south? If we vote no, as Robin said, absolutely no way. The banner this corner will be destroyed. Scotland, spending in Scotland will be, will be hammered. But at the moment, even with the higher spending in Scotland, we generate more than enough tax, more than enough tax to pay for that in the, in, in, in the Scottish economy. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, if you look back over the last five years, if Scotland had got back the same percentage of spend, it's a percentage of tax taken generated for the UK economy would have been eight and a half billion pounds better off, sixteen hundred pounds per person in the, across the country. Right. Very quickly just going to try and explain a paradox to you. Why is it that if the data says that Scotland is a rich country, when you actually look at uh, around Scotland, it doesn't look like that? This is a data from uh, Eurostat and it looks at the different parts of the UK broken up into regions and the GDP per person, the amount of wealth generated in each part of the UK. As you'd expect, City of London, the darker the colour, the more wealth is generated in that part of the UK. City of London, a stretch across the M4 corridor, down the south coast, a bit around Manchester, northeast of Scotland and across the central belt of Scotland. That's the parts of the UK that generate the wealth. The next chart. It's where the wealth ends up. UK Office of National Statistics, distribution of wealthiest households in the UK. The class of wealthiest households is total assets of just under a uh, million pounds, £967,000. In the south coast of England, more than 13% of households categorised as wealthy households. In Scotland, less than 7%. That's the answer to the paradox of why on paper, the numbers say that Scotland's a rich country, but when you drive around parts of it, it certainly doesn't look like it. <coughs> now I'm just going to put this quote up because all we've heard so far, I hope you're scared, you should be if you listen to what you've heard from me from John and Dan so far, um, because the no campaign is all about scare stories, all the horrible things are going to befall Scotland if we've got the audacity to vote to take control of our um, economy and our politics for ourselves. This is from the first time the question was asked back in 1979, which some of you may remember. Direct quote from the Daily Express editorial a month before the vote in 1979. All the horrible things that befall the Scottish economy and had the audacity to vote yes in that referendum. And if you have a look through that list, anyone that knows that their history understands very, very well. The industrial heartland that the Daily Express prophesied would be destroyed, like Dan and John have just done uh, in terms of talking about a yes vote for independence. All of that was destroyed in the 1980s after the Scottish Assembly didn't take place. Now, Dan's on enough, honest enough to say that he, um, he, he was against the Scottish Parliament getting set up. Um, as I say, he was, he was wrong on that. I think most people in this room would agree, and he's wrong on this as well. And me and Dan had a chat upstairs about politicians, and he said he hates politicians. I, as a business, businessman, also don't have a lot of time for politicians. And I said to Dan, the best way to get rid of a layer of politicians is to vote yes in the referendum, and then we can take out the whole Westminster area, which is by far the most expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Finish up with a wee bit of an opportunity because this is all about the future. The strength of the economy is there, the numbers back now. Go look for yourself. There's loads of stuff on YouTube you can go and look at to get more, more data on this. But I just want to run through something to do with uh, our near neighbour Norway. Now, the no campaign laugh at us when we say that one day we could be as rich as Norway. Remember, in 1970, before the oil in Norway it was poorer in Scotland, okay? um, they've been there. A couple of cars have played them very well. But when you actually look at the advantages that we have compared to Norway, we've got many, many advantages that they don't have. We've got other thriving sectors. The Norwegian economy is fairly narrow on oil, fisheries, and one or two other things. We've got large sectors like our whiskey, for example, which is a tremendous sector. Our food and drink is very, very strong. 
They've got all kinds of sectors and they don't have the advantage of we've got better location than them in terms of we got ease at cost cost of infrastructure compared to Norway because we're not such a, a big country with uh, well, uh, we've got better weather than that, which makes operating easier. We've got a lot of business language, we've got industrial heritage that they don't have, we've got um, you know, four, four of the top hundred universities in the world that they don't have. There's many and we've got had an international brand profile than the Norwegians have, we've got a lot of diaspora around the world that want Scotland to succeed in the world and the Norwegians have with all these advantages that Scotland got uh, compared to Norway and there's absolutely no reason why we shouldn't be looking at Norway as being our starting point, not as an ultimate aim. And if you had to sit in a blank bit of paper and write down what an ideal country in the 21st century should look like in terms of location, language, size, natural resources, the history, heritage, brand profile, uh, human talent, you would, you would come up with something that pretty much looks like Scotland. Tremendous opportunity here, people. The only bit of the jigsaw, the only bit of the jigsaw that's missing is to get people out to vote yes on September 18th, as I believe they will, and then we can build something really special here. Thanks very much.